Before we open the floor to questions about Dr. Turner's presentation, let's hear from our panelists sports psychologist Dr. Lisa DeBoer and cultural anthropologist Dr. Dale Van Clay. Dr. Van Clay, can we start with you? Well, I like Dr. Turner's work, but to be honest, it seems out of touch with the modern global scene. I agree that sports is a kind of social education. That is, a way of teaching important social values, but his model is fixed. We have a global sports culture now. You can't just treat a particular sport as if it carries a fixed set of values. Once a sport moves to another society, it loses its original meanings and gains new ones. What's your opinion, Dr. DeBoer? I think that is not being fair to Dr. Turner. I am sure he would agree with that, but he wasn't talking about sports spreading from one culture to another. He was talking about how sports function within a single society. An interesting case is France's 2018 World Cup team. The French media loved it because it showed this image of a diverse France with players from a variety of ethnic backgrounds. They wanted that diversity to be truly the French reality. This example also raises something Dr. Turner didn't touch on sports as a means for social or political change. Think of last year in the United States, when African American football players protested police violence by refusing to join the opening ceremony. And think about the angry reaction that produced. I mean, that rather goes against the basic idea of sports, doesn't it? People want sports to be free from politics. I disagree. Sports have always been about politics. What about the nationalism and flag waving? But sports are also capable of introducing political change. Women and minorities, in many cases, found equal treatment in sports before they won rights in society. For example, the rugby player in the England League, who recently came out as gay, became a famous role model. I would argue that that might be an example of the reverse, of how changes in society make it possible for people in sports to take steps forward. Well, that's just it. They're mutually reinforcing. In a sport like rugby, where male culture has been such an unfortunate element of the game, at least in certain societies, it's doubly hard to come out. But when someone does, that makes it easier for others in the rest of society. I'm not saying that sports can't have political meaning, only that they're expected to be outside politics. But isn't it exactly when they challenge that expectation that sports have the greatest potential to produce change? The examples of the American football players and the rugby player both show that breaking with prior expectations of what a sport should be is key to the political meaning. And, of course, those expectations govern the culture of the game, too. When a sport challenges these, it can teach society more than just fair play. I think that's another way of understanding what Dr. Turner meant when he talked about sports as a kind of social education.